Welcome everyone to another Flute Center of New York sponsored review. Thank you, Flute Center of New York. This week they sent me something pretty special. It is the latest student model from Yamaha. I myself started on a student model Yamaha. So this is a bit nostalgic for me. You guys seem to really like how I did my Lefrec video. So let's do it like this again. While I'm doing this, I should let you guys know if you want to purchase a flute through the Food Center of New York using my code JAF, you're absolutely welcome to. Just know that you are helping a girl out. So I do get a small commission on each flute. You get free domestic shipping within the US. You get a 10 day trial instead of a seven day trial. You also get an extended 18 month warranty on your new flutes and you get to take up to three instruments out on trial at a time. If you guys are wondering about how to take flutes out on trial, you just have to contact the Flute Center in New York. I'll put all the links to their contact info in the bottom bar below. I just wanted to make a small note that this code really only works on the instruments and the instruments are going to be $400 or more. That's just how much they cost. But if you are on flutesheetmusic.com, which is the sheet music department of the Flute Center of New York, you can use my code for 10 percent off there. Just make sure you're actually in the market to buy if you take flutes out on trial because it's not really fair to other people if you're not actually buying stuff but you're hogging the flutes so don't do that. Ooh, I was not expecting such nice packaging. So we have the Yamaha 262 silver plated head joint body and mechanism offset G French open hole C foot. That's interesting. Then there's the Yamaha 222 basically the current version of the student model that I personally own, which is the 225SII. This one is silver plated head joint, body and mechanism, closed hole, plateau model. Closed hole and plateau means the same thing. Pointed key arms, C foot joint. Then there's Yamaha 222 curved head joint. Oh, this must be the current model of the curved head joint that was shown to me when I was a little girl and I had no idea they even existed. And then we have the Yamaha 322, sterling silver head joint, silver plated body and mechanism, closed hole, which is the plateau model. C foot joint. Oh, even the 222 has pointed key arms now. Mine didn't. Oh, wow. Looks like this is the 262. And this is the 222. This must be the 322. There's a few extra things that I do need to tell you guys. When you're trying flutes, make sure you take off all dangly jewelry. This thing's really short and it's never going to hit the flute, so I'm leaving it on. Especially rings are the biggest culprit in scratching flutes. Wash your hands before touching the flutes. I just did that before filming. Don't don't use the polishing cloth, the cleaning rod, or the cleaning gauze because it's not yours yet. And last but not least, each flute is placed each flute differently. Like in Harry Potter, just as the wand chooses the wizard, so the flute chooses the flutist. I'm just here to try to describe to the best of my ability how these flutes work on me. Your mouth is not going to be exactly like my mouth. Your body is not going to be like my body. So take my reviews as sort of a starting point if you are trying to mess around with these particular models. I'm curious about this. This is where they stored the curved head joint. Oh, this thing will just go right over the hard case. Let's open the 222. This is going to be so freaking nostalgic for me. I've shown this before. So if you go look at my Yamaha 577, 677, and 777, they all have this. This includes polishing cloth, cleaning gauze, an instruction manual. Very thorough. Hard case looks pretty similar to mine. It just looks a little bit more modern than the one that I have. Wow, this is so new that it still has the blue tape on the <laughs> buckles here. The plastic on this is still on here. I kind of want to tear it off, but the Asian in me is telling me not to. They've updated the inside, whereas before it was sort of like a furry texture. Now it's velvety. That's nice because I felt like the furry texture inside shed. Yeah, they have pointed key arms now. That is so fancy. This doesn't look like a beginner model flute. Oh, this looks very familiar. The shape of the lip hole. It looks like they've kept that the same from when I was a kid. What they haven't kept the same is where you put the cleaning rod. So they put the cleaning rod between the body and the head joint and foot joint. They've updated this for a very long time now, but this is a very nice plastic cleaning rod. It used to be metal. They've also fashioned it to look like wood. Oh my gosh, they still have the little 
pointers here. That's a very Yamaha thing. They haven't changed the spacing. The trill keys also are at the same height as I remember them. They do use plastic instead of cork for these trill keys. They also use plastic for the foot joint as well. It has that sort of Yamaha bounce, but with resistance, which is perfect for a student because the resistance basically evens out your technique. This is bringing me back to my childhood right now. The way Yamaha flutes like to be played is there's like this giant column of air that you can feel sort of rushing through your mouth. The lower you go, the further forward in your mouth that column of air starts. And the higher up you go, the further back in your mouth that column of air starts. The last time I tried it on my student model, that was the case too. But let's see if that has changed here. <laughs> That came out really easily. Holy. That last note was a D7. I am noticing that I need to kind of go pretty full bullfrog mode. So I have to make this front part of my mouth super, super open for the sound to resonate more. <laughs> resonance chamber is down here drop the jaw but then in terms of like feeling the column of air it's laying very low I don't feel it at all against the roof of my mouth this does make me think though that maybe it's just because my mouth is bigger than when I was a kid there is like a certain width of your column of air that it has to be anyway that part I think stays the same but the body of the person changes I'm gonna try it with harmonics <laughs> The column of air, I feel like, is down here. Lower notes, you'll feel the column of air starting here. Higher notes, you'll feel it starting further and further back. I'm also feeling quite a bit of air pressure going right around here. This area here has to remain very, very open. I can't actually feel much going on right around here. Let's try out dynamics. <laughs> be closer to what a forte sounds like but you do try to make it as big as possible when you make it piano you basically keep where the top of the column is and you bring the column up I'm now going to try tone color <laughs> That's interesting. So you have your column of air down here, right? This area where I felt like I couldn't really feel much going on there, that's the part where I manipulate the shape. I try to make that area as like big and fat as possible, which is impossible to show here. So I'll show here from the front side. I'm envisioning a wide bubble on the top of my mouth. For a hollow tone, I am envisioning the whole thing getting squashed inwards. Think of it like that. All right, so now we have scales and articulation. Fiddling around with the mechanism. <laughs> It's actually a little bouncier than I expected. Maybe they did update that part. I'm going to now try scales and thirds. <laughs> They 
definitely made it bouncier, but it has like this nice resistance to it. So if you like a heavier touch, you'll really like this. I'm gonna try out the trill keys and stuff. Yeah, very bouncy. I don't recall it being that bouncy. It feels really good though. It makes your trills a lot more shimmery. B flat lever. Ooh, there's a nice resistance to this too that I don't feel on many flutes. Last thing is articulation. classic Yamaha tongue, which is quite a bit further back than most flutes are up here. Most flutes you'll find tongue here or here. You can see how far back this is. It's funny when you tongue out here on a Yamaha, it sounds kind of fluff, 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 fluffy. I'll demonstrate it. <laughs> Like it sounds like you're doing a French tongue when you tongue that far up. If you tongue further back, you get that clean articulation. Let's try double tongue. You definitely feel like you're really cheating. The T part of the double tongue stays here. The K part, you kind of feel like you're sort of coming into the middle of nowhere. Like it's not really actually making much contact with anything. It's like a slow flutter in the middle of your mouth. Now I want to try the curved head joint. This is the head joint that I probably should have started on when I was a kid, but I'd never seen one before. So I thought it was ugly. Now that I see it, it's not that ugly. I think I only thought it was ugly because I was a kid and I didn't know how to express my surprise at something that looks so different than what I was used to. It very much changes how it resonates. The straight head joint, I can feel it resonating more here. This kind of feels like it's like right up against my face. I feel like I'm playing like this. I could feel the vibrations that are happening here. That might be something interesting that a young kid would need to get used to when they switch to a straight head joint. Let's try some harmonics. Based on how it sounds in front of my face, my body is telling me to do something different to make it sound the way it sounds on a straight head joint. the same it's just as if I put my ear here this is actually very comfortable to me oh I'll, I'll noodle around a bit too everything is louder because you're like right up against it I can hear more of the air rushing through the tube the keys sound louder to me in terms of how it works, it works exactly the same as this week. Dynamics. Let's try tone color now. Because your ear is like right up against the flute, you can hear the tone color changes more. There's that hollow tone.
That's cool. Okay, let's do some scales. <laughs> I will say that the balance is a little different because it's heavier here, but your face is closer here. So, so you may ha actually have to get your student, if you are teaching a young child, to lift this part of the flute higher, which means that when they switch to a straight head joint, they're going to have to learn to not try to like bring it up so much. Having to constantly lift this up is a little bit strange to me, but you know, I can see if you just get used to it, it should be fine. Let's do a bit of articulation. Articulation is going to be the same. Literally everything is just magnified because you could just hear more of what's going on in the tube. This reminds me of something interesting. I did have a student who played on a curved head joint and one of the th issues that I noticed about her was that her articulation was very soft. I wonder if it's because she simply could hear more of what was going on in the, in the tube than I could. <laughs> This way that I just did the double tongue, I really just wanted to make it as light as possible because I could hear so much of it. That one was better, but I could hear more of it. It was cleaner, but it was just louder. That had never occurred to me before. But in terms of this head joint, this head joint is great. Now we should try out the... Ugh. 262. Same package of like instruction manual, polishing cloth, cleaning gauze, etc. Interesting. So it looks like the plugs, you can't actually push them through. These plugs, you actually have to peel them out. Wait a second. Yo, they're numbered. Three, four, and then it says two, three, four. The finger numbers that they give are actually piano finger numbers. One, two, three, four, five. On the flute, it's thumb, one, two, three, four. Clever. Because they have that little lid, it does actually raise the height of the keys a little bit. check it online. So the only difference between the 262 and the 222 is the fact that you can have this be inline and that this one is open hole. I'm just going to do a quick check through the harmonics. <laughs> Same thing, you gotta have that bullfrog effect and it uses that column of air in the exactly the same way. Let's try tone color. Yeah, it's the same. Same for dynamics. feeling that controlling the piano on this flute would be easier with a smaller mouth because I can't necessarily feel exactly where that really narrow column of air is. A little bit of articulation. It's exactly the same. The only thing that I am feeling right now is that the only difference between this flute and the other one is the open hole and the closed hole. But I feel like this flute is just a tad sweeter. I'm gonna try out some of the mechanism as well. <laughs> can hear it too. This one does sound sweeter than the 222. 
Ooh, I have to say, these open holes are very big. Yep, they're huge. say this one is slightly less resistant than the 222. This is a very easy transition if you wanted to transition into an open hole flute from the 222. I think there really is a difference in how they make the 222 and the 262. I was expecting them to sound 100% the same and they don't. I'm interested in giving this guy a little try. It seems like to be a very tough French model case. It's the same cleaning rod and they have a shoulder strap as expected the same package of all the goods we have it in a very typical french model case Ooh, i like the padding in here it's kind of like soft padding i'm just gonna say right off the bat i think this one would be perfect for students who cannot deal with the open hole but they still want to have a silver head for a really nice sound also it has a c foot which is really good if you are a smaller person and you find B-foots to be way too heavy. This one has a silver head, closed hole C-foot. A very interesting combination of specs. Normally you don't see that, but let's see how this one plays. There's more depth resonance to it than the 262 for sure. I can feel this one higher up on the roof of my mouth. Hmm. Making this whole review is making me think about the fact that you can literally grow out of a flute. It's hard for me to feel what I'm doing on a 222 and a 262 because it sits so low in the mouth. Someone with a smaller mouth would be able to feel it against the roof of their mouth. But for this, I can feel it riding higher. So it's a lot easier for me to control this flute than it is to control the other ones. Let's do a little bit of harmonics. <laughs> Before, I was feeling like the tube of air, like the column of air was down here. I kind of feel it up here now, but you also feel the air like rushing around it. However, the thing that stays the same is the fact that you had to go full bullfrog. Let's try some dynamics in tone color. <laughs> It's the same, it's just that the column of air is just, just riding higher in my mouth now. And it's so much easier for me to control because it's higher now. Now for tone color. Here's a little bit different. Again, we're messing with this area. When you squash it in for that hollow sound, I find I have to kind of like lift the roof of my mouth too. Whereas before you're just pinching it inward, but now when you go hollow, you also have to envision it going a little higher. I like this. I feel like I can actually control the hollow tone a lot more since I'm actually doing a physical action with it. Let's do articulation. <laughs> Okay, so I had to do that a couple of times because it's just the tiniest little bit further forward in your mouth. Whereas before we're like around there, now we're like right there. In terms of how the double tongue feels, same thing, you really feel like it's a cheat. Like you don't feel like when you do the K sound that it's even hitting anywhere in the back of your mouth. The mechanism. So this feels 
exactly like the 222. It has that bouncy resistance but it's not as bouncy as the 262 so this makes me wonder if maybe you can just get this adjusted <laughs> There's nothing different. Well guys, that is my review of these glorious Yamaha flutes. Yamaha 222, the base model is $649. If you got the curved head joint to go with it, that's an additional $292. The 262 that I reviewed today is $1,095. And then the 322 is $1,247.99. If you are a teacher, get your student to try Yamaha and see if it works for them because if it does, it will take them very far. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also hang out with me on Twitch and Patreon. Thanks again, Flute Center of New York, for sponsoring this video, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.